What's going on guys? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Obviously, we're right outside the Wind Casino once again, playing the 2-5. I mean, 1,500 max uh, in a 2-5 game. It gets seriously deep and it's always a good time. Pretty much the stakes that we're most comfortable with right now. Starting off another very late session. It's past midnight. Uh, we just busted in one of the $400 bracelet events. Cashed in 30th place, unfortunately. Couldn't bring home the dub, but we're grinding it up for you guys. Another session, another 2-5. Hopefully we run it up uh, late night. Action should be fun. Should be a good time. We'll get into hands. Wish us luck. We hop into some 2-5 here at the win, and if you can't tell from the title, things get a little ridiculous. So strap in here. One of the first hands in with ace 10 of diamonds and plus one, I raise it up to $20. We get the cutoff and button to make the call, and now onto the small blind player who puts in a three bet to 80. Well, this is our second hand in at this table. I'm certainly not gonna fold in position. He's playing $1,500 deep, and I decide to just make the call, see what happens. The cutoff makes the call as well, but he's a little more short stacked with 300 behind. Anyways, three ways, the flop comes ace, queen, three, two clubs, and a diamond. With top pair, decent kicker, and a backdoor flush draw, the small blind throws out a bet of $200. Seems like a pretty strong line betting so large into two other players, but we're not folding top pair yet. We didn't call ace 10 to fold one pair. I make the call and the cutoff folds. So we're still going heads up. The turn is the seven of spades. He slows down and checks. Now with a semi marginal hand with only one pair, gonna see a free river. Let's see what happens. The river is the king of hearts. So all things considered, not really the best runouts. We do lose to pocket kings, lose to ace king, lose to a lot of different hands. But for a second time, he checks on this river. With the pretty bad river, I don't think we have much of a decision besides checking this one back. So I check it back. This player shows us pocket tens. So surprising he bets so large with essentially third pair on the flop, but happy to take it down first hand in. This next hand comes about an hour or two into the session. We've been pretty card dead, but we have aces in the hijack. What a spot. The unknown player first to act, who seems a little splashy, raises it up to $20. Haven't played a hand for a bit, like I said, so I try to 3-bet on the larger side as we both have about 3k plus in stack. I bump up the raise to $70, action folds around to this player, and he makes the call. Going to a flop of 5-6-6, two diamonds. He now leads into us for $125. This is the type of action we love to see, especially from this player type when we were card dead. Let the games begin, I make the call, see what happens. The turn is a three. This really shouldn't change a whole lot besides some wonky deuce forehand. Anyways, he continues with another bet of $310. I've seen this player bluff a ton. We're gonna keep slow playing our aces and set the trap. We're pretty much not going to be folding anytime soon. I make the call and we're off to a river which is the eight of hearts. Well, if this player has deuce four, so be it, seven four, so be it, or trips somehow. Let's see what happens, but he does something fun. He rips his entire stack in, and I ask for a count of how much it is. It's $2,330. We unblock Miss Diamonds. We have no Ace of Diamonds in hand with that, so I feel like we've just got to defend against this very loose player type. These overbet jams are pretty massive, but anyways, we've got to win this one. We've lost a lot in the past few sessions. I close my eyes, toss in the chip for a call. This player shows us 7-3 of hearts. Ship it. We win about a $6,000 pot our way. Always nice to win a big one with aces. The very next hand that we get dealt in, we pick up ace jack off suits in the low jack. I raise it up to $20. We get one player to call in the small blind, so off to a flop. Flop is a good looking one in a 7 5 rainbow. So when she checks to me, I put in a bet of $25. And with 25, she makes the call. The turn is a three. All things considered, doesn't feel like it changes the board too much. So she checks again. I size to another bet of $60. And once again, she makes the call. The river is a nine. So not really loving this board anymore. So when she checks for a third time, although I have top hair, I do have a good kicker. There are a number of different hands that beat us, considering like 8-6 that was open-ended on the flop, a lot of two-pair commas that may or may not have hit there. Anyways, I just checked this one back. This player shows us 4-5 off suit. Two hands in a row. We'll take it down. Let's go. The following spot with pocket nines and plus one. I raise it up to $20. There's a middle position player who makes the call. 
Now onto the cutoff player who puts in a 3 bet of 80. This player started with about $1,100 deep, and when action folds to me, or out of position, we're definitely not going to fold this hand yet. A little too strong to fold pre-flop, so I call, and the middle position player folds his cards. Let's go heads up to a flop of queen, six, deuce, two spades. I check, he bets out a continuation bet of $60, and with second pair here, one card over our pair, I don't think we can fold just yet. I made the call, let's see your turn. The turn is the five of diamonds, so all things considered in the three bet pot, doesn't seem like the board changes too much, so I check again. He now sizes up to $200. So it's a pretty unfortunate spot for us with second pair. When I think about what he would be doing, if I was in his shoes, I would definitely size up with all of my spade draws or over pairs or queen x holdings. So it seems like a pretty polarized line with either a value hand or some sort of draw. Ultimately, this turn card is pretty good for our hand considering it's under our pair. So I toss in the call, I'm not going to fold just yet and evaluate a river. The river is the ace of hearts. Pretty gross. Now we just have to shut down and fold to any river bet. So I check, hoping he'd check it back, and ultimately he does check back. I show pocket nines, he shows pocket kings. Nice hand, Drew. He certainly didn't have a draw, just had me the whole way. After that nines in, we've been card dead again for a while, so time to splash around when we look down at the 3-5 of diamonds. We're in the hijack, the low jack player opens it up to $15, and yeah, there's really nothing to say about this one. I make the call, I wanna see a flop. The cutoff, button, big blind all come along as well, so multi-way. The flop comes pretty good, jack, 10, 5, 2 diamonds. Bottom pair with the flush draw, the low jack puts in a continuation bet of $25. It's pretty small, and I think I'm happy to continue with this price. Raising seems like a little bit of an overplay, so I call, and the cutoff comes along as well. So three ways, the turn is the three of hearts. Oh man, bank city card for us. We've improved the two pair along with our flush draw. The low jack continues for another bet of 75. Well, we're multi-way, we have a lot going on for us. I think it's time to raise now. And I size to $250. The cutoff gets out of the way fairly quickly and back onto this low jack player who thinks for a while, doesn't feel comfortable with this spot and ultimately just lets his cards go. Sadly, no more value for us, but it's always nice to bink a dream run out with a pretty trash hand. This next hand comes in a straddled pot from the under the guns position, and we are in the hijack with king jack off suit. We put in a raise to $35 here. Only the small one makes the call, so we're going heads up in position. Flop comes 10, 9, 7, rainbow. All things considered, really great board for us with a double gutter, which means any queen or eight gives us the straight, along with two over cards to the board. I put in a continuation bet of $55. A little bit larger considering we have so much going on here and she makes the call let's try to bink something the turn is the queen bink we have the nut straight she checks for a second time and she has a lot behind definitely want to get more of the money in here so i size up to 135 dollars sadly we see a fold unfortunate that we don't get more after binking the perfect turn card but happy to take down ships for the last interesting hand of note, things get a little bit dicey with ace-king offsuit on the button, once again another undergun straddle. The hijack player raises it up to $25, and I think that this $25 raise, a little bit too small. Let's bump it up, I size to 100, action folds around to this player who raised, and he defends, makes the call. Going to a flop of jack-7-3, all diamonds. He checks to me, and I don't do the diamond check, I don't want to check my cards. I know one of the cards that I'm holding is red, and it is a diamond, I just don't know which one it is. So I'm praying at this point that I do have the ace of diamonds. I throw out a bet of $125 when he checks. He thinks for a long, long time, while thinking, I'm still praying that I have the ace of diamonds, because it just would be so much more comfortable to hit a diamond and know I have the nuts opposed to having the second nuts. But anyways, he thinks for way too long. I check my cards and nope, to our surprise, we actually have the king of diamonds. Had my suits wrong, but he ends up folding, which is nice, happy to take down the pot, even though we didn't have the ace of diamonds. Still racking in chips. One, two, one, two. Yeah. 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 
So I've been saying I really want to mix up other casinos, but right now, I mean, there's a reason why we just keep playing the win 2-5. The game is just good. Very, very fun. So shout out to the always very, very cool, great looking design. Luckbox merch, Luckbox hat bringing the run good with aces. And uh, for people who are curious, because I'm playing a lot of poker this month, I've definitely been doing a lot of studying. So uh, for specifically cash games, I think Solve for Why has really great resources, always really quality content. So I've been learning a lot with their homeschool 2.0 and all the other content there. So if you wanna check it out, use my affiliate link down in the description below or in the pinned comments. Honestly helps my cash game a lot and kind of opened up a whole new perspective into things that I had no idea about. So really, really helpful stuff. End of the day, we were in for $2,500 out of the game for $47.45. It's 4 a.m. We played from midnight to 3 or 3.30 and it's late. These, these games have been uh, ridiculously good and you know what? Our sleep schedule is going to take a little bit of a hit. But anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. Absolute banger. I mean, we're crawling out of this 10k pun hole slowly but surely. Let's get it done in the next few videos, hopefully, and uh, be done with this little tracker here. But thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, obviously, a like would be much appreciated. Subscribe button. Don't be afraid of that one. See you guys next time. Peace.